warm greetings from ajk college of arts and science respected resource person for the day chef ajit janardhan head of the department mr jain pillai my colleague mr murli dharan and my dear beloved students a warm good afternoon indeed it's with great pleasure i welcome chef ajit janardhan executive chef residency towers coimbatore in our midst we have a versatile and a multifaceted individual who is more than just almost his culinary skills he is flexible and can adapt himself to constantly changing situations he has completed his hotel management from ih MCT Institute of Hotel Management and Catering Technology Trivandrum He was with Carnival Cruise Lines as a chef de party from 2001 to 2007 He has served as the senior sous chef at the CGH Earth Experience Hotels from 2000 January 2000 to May 2009 and promoted as the executive chef from mid 2009 to february 2016 he also served as the executive chef at the brand boatyard port kochi from november 2017 till date he is with the residency towers coimbatore as the executive chef i welcome you chef to this webinar for sharing your wealth of knowledge to our young budding chefs thank you chef and over to you sir hello students um i mean budding chefs budding uh, uh, people who are you know waiting to come into the industry i think uh, i understand that all of us have you know come into a a massive roadblock and uh, it's been challenging to say the least for a for a lot of us not i don't say for a lot of us for all of us and uh, i think one of the hardest industries that have that are hit and one of the Uh, one of the last recovering industries is going to be the hospitality industry and the aviation industry that being said we are the most uh, best equipped to take care of ourselves uh, and come out of this this entire thing ourselves uh, i have had uh, a lot of my colleagues who have started their own catering businesses they who have started their own Uh, industries and uh, people who have you know started doing what they want to do and what whatever they have dreamed of doing and i think we are the most uh, best equipped people to to do that now which is what brings me to this particular topic and i this is what i wanted to talk to you all of you uh, regarding because uh we are all so uh, so used to our the way we do our business you know i'm sure all of you know whoever has gone in for training the second years and third years you know they have already uh, seen a, a part of the industry where you know bulk cooking is happening where people are cooking for 1000 2000 3000 people and uh, so much of food is being wasted and then they're getting food from uh, Mm, from japan and china and uh, united states and norwegian salmon and uh, all these things that have been you know brought from different countries and different places and uh, somewhere i think we have lost what has always belonged to us we have uh, forgotten we have forgotten what uh, what we what we are all about what what uh, what does what is it that we are and uh, what what uh, where we have done now uh, i from what i given to understand there is a small q and a box so if any of you uh, feel that you are not understanding what i am saying or you want me to change the language you want me to speak in hindi i am fluent in hindi malayalam uh, tamil to a certain extent so if you want me to uh, switch over to any other language or maybe and maybe tell you in a couple of different languages i can always do that 
so generally this would be a this should be a live session where you know i would be talking to you guys and i'll be speaking to you people directly so i always like jay knows i always prefer a little bit of interaction with people so i think that was the first thing he said you know you will not be able to interact with the students uh, but the q and a box is there uh, no doubt a small uh, if you guys don't ask me questions uh if you don't ask me questions then i will not be able to uh, my session will not last long if you don't ask me questions as simple as that i am a very cut and dry person i uh, tend to uh, talk uh, short and sweet uh, i will not uh, keep boring you with uh, 100 different lectures uh, i will only look forward to sharing my experience and i am looking forward to answering uh, whatever questions you have however stupid you think it is yeah because uh, at this point of time i know all of you are filled with doubts what is going to happen how it is going to be i myself don't know what going to happen tomorrow i am uh, uh, i'm sure you guys are also even more worried than that so any question that comes down to you please feel free to uh, put in the q and a box and i will i will answer it as honestly as i can uh so we are going to go straight into this topic please uh, if any of you need to ask questions please feel uh, free to ask the question going local what do you understand by going local uh, why do you and me need to go local and what are the benefits of being local now uh time and time again you know we have always looked at Uh, taking things from here and there, and then you know, uh, creating a big massive experience, but always we have failed to look around us. What is it that is going around us? What is it that we can use, and uh, how best we can utilize the ingredients that are there around us? We have never looked at it. We have always, uh, you know, been uh, so. so taken by you know what is that uh, salmon is coming from uh, norway it needs to be flown in from norway the new zealand lamb shanks need to be brought when have we all when have we actually uh, looked at what is ingredient that is there right with us ha- i'm sure all of you are in tamil nadu would have tasted uh, the mutton from madurai i think the best mutton uh, comes from madurai uh, i don't think new zealand lamb shanks can beat any of that now why do you why do you and me need to go local because of covid we know there is no chance of getting it from anywhere else we cannot we cannot be right now flying down uh, uh, new zealand lamb shanks uh, down here and then cooking it we cannot be doing that so we need to look at the best next best option and the next best option is is right in our hand it is right close to us and we are able to get it at our hands length we just need to go and get it there and utilize it what are the benefits benefits are multiple you are not the only person benefiting by this particular uh, gesture you are uh, the person who is bringing you the mutton the farmer who is doing it for you is is growing it for you the the butcher who is cutting it the person who is transporting there is an entire economy that uh, revolves behind this benefits of being local we are we are able to support all of those people we are able to give an employment to all those people and it is going to be the fresh fresh mutton possible does not need to be frozen so the goat is slaughtered within the next hour or two hours you will have the meat you would have cooked it and you will be giving it and now i don't don't misunderstand me i'm not talking only about mutton it can be for that matter it can be anything i get my fresh fish from cochin cochin harbor 6 o'clock in the morning i get a call from the from from the harbor saying sir these are the fish available what do you want i get the fish here within uh, by 11 o'clock 12 o'clock i have the fish here that fresh we are looking at this freshness is not going to come to you if you are uh, going to 
buy it from different different uh, places why am i telling you this because you are the people who are going to be the new generation who are going to come up behind me once i have left this industry you are going to the people who are going to be taking my place i want you to think about this i want you to understand that this is what we need to do for you and me to survive tomorrow in this world so let us look at it from that perspective how is it going to benefit us can we actually utilize this if we can utilize it how best we can utilize it so if i take a local product uh will i be able to do anything good with it uh will i be able to create a, a gourmet experience a healthy experience will i be able to create uh, uh to speak in uh, to speak in the local language idedhu enna panna mudiyum creativity is the is the key here uh are you aware of one restaurant like this in coimbatore that actually serves only local food have you ever seen a restaurant in coimbatore that serves only local food i am not talking about uh, uh, you know uh, don't don't tell me valarmati mess and all those things valarmati is also i know uh, i know them very well they are also utilizing a lot of local products yes but i know one restaurant that is totally utilizing only products made in coimbatore and in tamil nadu this is the one i don't know how many of you have actually gone there and seen it it is called tinai amudu this is the perfect example of going local his entire menu consists of millets his entire produce is made up only of products that are made in tamil nadu that are grown here that are made even including from the from the oil to the salt is is taken from here that is a perfect example whenever you get time or you know if you are able to order off this particular uh, restaurant please do that he serves very good food i have gone and eaten there as well prior to covid uh, it is an example to be followed it is the perfect example of a of a of a very very local business who is supporting the local farmers he takes all his produce from the local farmers and he is able to serve it uh i want to share a video with this guy with you guys now uh okay now to a little bit of serious thing uh i just want to show you how you know uh how we are able to uh help the community uh it is time that we stop looking at uh, ourselves and uh, we need to start looking at what we can do for each other uh, the main the, the blue circle that you see is the food cultivation it is where you know the uh, the farmers who are uh, who are laying the who are doing the farms who are working on the farms who are growing this uh, they are the people who come at, come inside the the circle of food cultivation now the uh, the one on the uh, the orange uh, is called value added processing it is uh, the food processing that happens where the meals are prepared uh, where the uh, where the entire uh, processing of the raw ingredient that happens so each of these are business zones where people are actually Uh, doing something by being local and where the money that is circulating remains within ourselves only it does not go out to anybody else the uh, the green the green circle what you see is aggregation storage or distribution uh, aggregation storage and distribution basically means uh, the where the processed where the processed meals are there which are being stored yeah vijit i will uh, i will come to your question uh, once we are done with this yeah uh, 
I'll, I'll, I will answer that question. Don't worry. So, aggregation storage and distribution is where uh, you can uh, where it is stored and it is kept. And eaters, end marketers, people like us who take the food and uh, we you know we cook it or we we create a we create an experience with it and then we serve it. Yeah. Now, what it does, it 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 uh, it helps the community in seven ways. One is the connection, basically keeps us in connect. You know, the entire uh, entire people are in in connection for this entire process. Supply and demand. Uh, supply is the farmer. Demand is us. We demand the farmer supplies. Outreach. Outreach is where people come to us. You know, people say, okay, this is excellent food or this is Coimbatore product. We need to do really nice. And then, you know, people are able to come, people people come to us. Advocacy basically means that we are saying that this is this is the right thing to do. This is what, this is what has to be done. Education and learning is things like what we are doing. I am telling you about local food because somebody taught me that local food is the best. I tried it out and it worked out really well. Technical assistance is basically, you know, helping out in whatever way we can helping out to understand how it is to be done. So because the uh, farmer is utilizing, is cultivating his farms, he will need equipment, he will need people. So he will need assistance there. Uh, I am the cooking person. I might need assistance in, in use, using new equipment and things like that. So at the end of it, it is one entire cycle that we come to and uh, we help each other in ensuring that you know, we are we are one entire circle. Uh, now, yeah. If we if we were in a in a live session, I would have the question I would have asked you is, do you know what is this? Yeah. Now we are coming to the question of uh, to the topic of responsible cuisine. Yeah. Uh, I would have quickly asked you guys what this is. This is this was one of our dishes that we had uh, we had made uh, for our uh, for our uh, for one of our dinners that we had done. We had, had a pre-plated dinner, and uh, it was a vegetarian dinner. It was the it was a marriage of an important person, and uh, they had requested for a menu, and we served this as one of the starters. Uh, this is a kanchi idli that we have made in a glass tumbler. Uh, we've got uh, some coconut chutney on top, and under the coconut chutney, we've got uh, small uh, uh, shallot sambar, charioli sambar. And uh, so, all the ingredients that we have sourced in this particular uh, thing has come from in and around. Uh, in and around 50 kilometers of where we live. Simple, local. Uh, we have, I have taken the rice. I have taken the, uh, I have taken the uh, whatever ingredients is required. I have taken it from there. So. Uh, audio is low. Saurabh, can you hear me now? Uh, Jain, you, are you able to hear me? Yeah, I am able to hear. I don't know what happened to Saurabh. Saurabh, probably you have to raise your volume, I think. Okay. Yes, sir, we can hear you. No, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, so simple, local, uh, uh, easy to do. Only thing required is your creativity. It is. It needs your input to think differently. It needs your thing to redefine um, how you need to do it. <clears throat> I want to. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of ingredients that uh, might be slightly uh, new to you guys. Yeah, it will be. slightly new to you guys it will be something that uh, you might or might not have heard of uh, now this is 
this is what you call a kadaknath chicken uh, i don't know how many of you are familiar with this kadaknath chicken uh, kadaknath chicken is a chicken that is popular and it belongs to india uh, it is a black chicken uh, this was uh, this was popularly uh, uh, it was raised in a lot of places in madhya pradesh now they have started uh, moving it out to uh, a lot of other different places in fact there is a farm in uh, in coimbatore about uh, 20 30 kilometers away where they are actually uh, growing this this is one of the dishes we had served for another dinner uh, where we had uh, where we had made this so uh, extremely extremely flavorful extremely nice tasting uh, it tastes a lot uh, better than your uh, uh natta koli that they do here uh it is softer than the natta koli if cooked properly uh so this is another ingredient that is very very popular that we can, that can be utilized if you think about it right uh another ingredient that i want to show share with you guys is called uh, coconut blossom sugar yeah it is unrefined uh, it is less cholesterol it is diabetic friendly mm. this is another another product that is very very uh, plentifully available in uh, in tamil nadu as well in kerala as well uh, i think instead of instead of the refined sugar we should all stop the refined sugar and start using this sugar i have used it to make indian desserts also they come out really well uh, we have done a coconut blossom rasgulla uh, it is really nice you can use it to make uh, a lot of other desserts like i said creativity uh, that is what is key uh, for you to succeed in this yeah uh, okay now uh, this is what i would uh, this is where uh, you know uh, we are going to talk about responsible cuisine responsible cuisine basically when i talk about responsible cuisine or you know what what do you mean by responsible cuisine is uh till now we have been uh, you know we have always if you look at hotels what we have done is we have always gone we have uh, uh, we will have 150 people 200 people who will come in for food we will make we will make a lot of food and uh, you know we will uh, at the end of it a lot of food will will get wasted uh responsible cuisine means taking ownership taking leadership to ensure that we are going to prepare the correct amount of food food wastage is minimum uh, we will use produce or we will use products as far as possible from the local market and ensure that we are benefiting the local people who are here this is the crux of uh, of responsible cuisine if you want to say that uh, i think all of us have to come together to do this and to ensure that we are able to spread that message to everybody that this is what we are planning to do we are going to reduce wastage we are going to take uh, local we are going to interact with local people get what is the best available in the market and we will do a gourmet healthy experience of food for all these people who are coming to us to do business yeah and in terms of this i want to uh, tell you another thing that is this is a new trend that is coming in it's called a root to leaf trend it is basically means that we will utilize every part of the plant or animal for that matter uh, in making food so uh, for example if i take beetroot beetroot you can use the leaves you can use the root you can use the skin you can use the 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 actual thing we are using anyways so the entire plant gets utilized in whatever cooking that we are doing in fact we are so uh, we are we do this this is part of us somewhere we have stopped doing it if you look at uh, look at people from uh, from tamil nadu and kerala we utilize every part of the banana plant you take the banana plant we will utilize the leaves we will utilize the stem we will utilize the fruit we will utilize the flower uh, 
uh, and any of these we are not able to utilize we will utilize it to make handbags or we will utilize it to make something else or we will utilize the leaves to eat food in we have to bring this trend back we have to bring this back uh, to ourselves and know that this is what we are and we have to wake up to our, what is important to our people and how we can how we can make our things famous let us start doing that let us uh, let us start supporting our local people rather than supporting uh, big big uh, pharma companies and big big uh, uh, multinational companies who are, who are doing a lot of these things let us start doing things ourselves and let us start uh, benefiting ourselves yeah uh, one last one uh, yeah why do we need this approach i i'm sure all of you uh, by now you know have been affected by covid in some form or the other what has it actually taught us it taught us we cannot waste we don't have the option of wasting food uh, let me let me tell you this small thing uh, the uh, the local farmer who used to bring us milk pre covid he used to bring us close to 300 liters of milk every week 300 liters of milk every week now it has been almost 6 months he was telling me yesterday sir you used to take from me every week you used to take so much of milk from me now i am not even able to find somebody to take 80 90 liters of milk from me the rest of the milk i am wasting i don't know what to do so let us be very very clear we don't have we cannot waste we cannot throw things and we cannot put them in the garbage bin just just for the sake of it so every time we we decide to throw one piece of food into the waste basket let us let us know that there is somebody who, there who will be needing this we have to utilize what we have all of us have been given a, you know a lot of things we have seen we are we are always constantly seeing people who are farming who are who are selling these things let us support them let us utilize what they have if you will get out in the market today and you will see you will see a lot of people selling bananas a lot of people are selling bananas on the road red banana different varieties of banana we didn't have this earlier so we have a lot of lot of things happening with us let us utilize people my friends i can assure you that there is nobody else who is going to be helping us nobody is going to come to our help so let us all wake up let us all go local yeah uh, like uh, like our our uh, prime minister mr modi says let us become atman nirbhar let us start doing things locally let us uh, let us be responsible citizens and let us uh, ensure that we are doing the best for the nation as well yeah uh, i think that's about uh, what i have uh, now i just want to order us uh, answer a small uh, question uh, that uh, vijit sai has put up uh vijit has asked me how to get into the cruise line like medical fitness sea sickness is it necessary to know swimming can you please explain as you have good experience in the cruise line okay uh vijit uh for getting into the cruise line i recommend you uh finish your college you do work for a couple of years somewhere in the in india you uh, medical fitness they will check they will check your medical fitness sea sickness is not a problem these ships are massive when i say massive i mean uh, the biggest one these days carries about 4000 passengers and it carries about 1500 crew so it will be totally about 5500 6000 people on a ship so it is almost it's very very steady very very stable you will not even come you will not even come to know it is sailing except for in bad weather uh i felt seasick once uh, but it's not a big deal i have seen uh, people who have worked eight nine years they also felt seasick but you will get over it 
is it necessary to know swimming uh, not really you don't need you don't need to know swimming uh, they are not going to ask you to swim and sh- they are not going to show you ask you to swim and show you but if you can learn swimming nothing like it will help you yeah uh, now cruise lines is a very very good uh, industry to get into but like everything else right now uh, everything is put on hold uh, i am not sure if they would uh, hire you immediately but down the line definitely in 3 or 4 years i definitely see the cruise ship industry coming back uh, say by 2022 2023 uh, cruise ship industry will be back online hotels will be back online and you guys will be the first people who are going to get in get into work so uh, be ready all you guys you know your uh, your time is coming you might face a little bit difficulty but uh, i am sure all of you will uh, have good futures and you will be able to take uh, your things forward very easily uh, so jain i am pretty much done with my uh, uh, with my session so if there's anything else people want to ask me i am uh, more than happy to uh, you know answer anything that they want yeah uh, thank you chef uh... Boys, this is a golden opportunity for everyone. Uh, uh, so I don't have to talk about uh, Ajit Chef. Like he has been with us at so many occasions, and most of the students are aware that like how much flexibility such a cool person. This is the best opportunity. You can you can ask him questions in uh, your language. So there is absolutely no issues. Like you just type the questions immediately. Uh, not necessary that it should be relevant the topic of his today's session. it can be anything related to our industry so he has got such a vibrant exposure like he worked so many years in dubai worked uh, in uh, he is an entrepreneur he was an entrepreneur then he worked with a lot of properties in india and abroad and that so please feel free to ask us in session this is a, because every time we don't get this kind of opportunity utilize it can you explain the procedure and documents required to apply for for to apply for cruise what you can do is uh they will have ads coming on uh, in newspapers and things like that you will definitely need your passport uh after the passport is there then uh, you they will give you an employment letter if you when you pass the after you pass the interview uh after that you will have to go in for a they will have classes for you fire safety classes crowd management classes uh you will have a set of classes which you have to apply and you will have to get your certificates from there after that you will have a visa interview for whichever company you are doing you will have to take a visa uh once the visa is done then uh then you will have to buy your tickets so that's pretty much how it goes uh this process can take anywhere from 5 uh, to 6 months uh, based on what's your experience and you know all these things so uh, even after everything is done the visa uh, visa interview is the most critical uh, even if everything else works out there might be you might get uh, rejected for the visa thing and after that you'll have to wait for another 6 months to apply so that's that i hope uh, the person's name is not there i hope that i answers the question uh, krishna jit narayanan chef if you are good and skilled in indian cuisine especially south indian what is the opportunity for us working abroad do they, de- they do they demand for that definitely they demand for that i have uh, my friend um, chef rakesh uh, who heads uh, the cinnamon uh, cinnamon kitchen in uh, in uk Yeah, he's the he's the South Indian chef, and he's extremely highly in demand. I don't know if you are aware of Chef Pille. Uh, chef Suresh Pille is a very good friend of mine. Uh, he he does uh, South Indian food, Kerala food speci- specifically. He is working abroad. He is very very famous abroad. Uh, there is a lot of demand in the Middle East and the Gulf, Oman, all these places. 
they definitely look for south indian people uh, i do a restaurant in malaysia called uh, kaira uh, where i take only people uh, uh, malaysia city that are there abroad so uh, the key is to be dedicated to be passionate and uh, cuisine definitely any cuisine that you that you want will be in demand vijit sir if t- taken into account what are the difference between working in foreign country and that in ours <laughs> uh vijay vijay um i will say in foreign countries they don't uh um in foreign countries truth be told they don't they are not as dedicated to working as we are and they don't have they don't have too many people the way we have in our kitchens we have too many people uh you go abroad you are not going to have so many people to work with your workload will be really really high your workload will be uh, almost 10 times of what you would do here you will have to do your own cleaning you will have to do your own washing uh you will not have any trainees or anything like that 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 are there to help uh you will have to work fast so vijit that is one key difference but so the difference is that in foreign countries you might work only for 8 hours or 9 hours but you will be continuously working for 9 hours you will not have a break uh in our country working is a bit more relaxed there are more number of people uh plus you know you can be relaxed and things like that it's not very systematic in our country but foreign countries uh, especially in the when i'm talking about foreign countries i'm t- talking about america and europe it's very systematic you are uh, you are what job you are going to do you will know uh, one two three days in advance so uh, it's extremely extremely systematic shiv prasad sir what about the opportunity of service persons you have opportunities uh, shiva but uh, your chances will depend on how skilled you are will your chances will depend on how easily how well you communicate how good your knowledge is how good of a sales person you are so in cruise ship they are look for service people they are looking at people who are good good sales people who can sell people things who can, who are very very uh, vibrant people who are very uh, friendly that's what they are looking at so uh, i think i have answered that as well shiva uh, let me just see the chat saurabh uh hi chef is hotels are taking freshers for jobs in this pandemic how hard is it to get a job in a hotel in this situation it's very hard sort of uh as of now uh, without any kind of solution uh people are not looking at hiring immediately so it will take some time for jobs in hotels to open up uh, presently they are uh, the entire hiring process has been stopped i should say one thing uh, the cruise ship uh, experience that i had was was a really good experience uh, uh for me uh it was a tough experience but it was a good experience uh, it taught us a lot of things uh, you know uh, of how to handle uh, really high quality ingredients of it taught us how to Mm, how to, to uh, handle ladies of not scared about numbers because we was we were serving close to 20000 meals a day uh and non stop i i remember days when i made like 15 1500 pizzas uh non stop in about an 8 hour shift uh must have served almost uh uh every 
every uh, so when the cruise starts the second day of the cruise is called a, it's called a captain's dinner and for the captain's dinner generally there are two things it's prime rib of beef and uh, lobster uh, i have worked as both as a fish cook and a, and a roast cook so roast cook i used to cook almost uh, 400 500 kgs of uh, of uh, prime rib beef prime rib and we used to cook it and then each of these would be about 15 kgs and uh, it used to be back breaking work but it used to be fun we used to have a lot of fun on the ship and we used to enjoy ourselves even when we were doing lobsters we would cook almost 600 700 kgs of lobsters it used to be really fun doing the job but yes you have to be uh, dedicated to ensure that you are doing this uh, work Uh, Vijit Sai, sir, your experience during uh, Vijit pandemic uh, has slowed everything down. My typical day uh, for during before the before the pandemic was I would start at eight o'clock from home. Uh, I would have my meeting by eight forty-five. By nine thirty, I had my briefing. By ten o'clock, I had my banquet briefing. i had my store approvals by 11 o'clock i had it was non stop it was non stop till about 9 10 in the night now everything has slowed down everything has come has come to uh you know now i spend more of my time researching talking to guys like you Uh, uh seeing what are this the next trend coming in uh, working on immunity foods uh working on some different uh different types of uh things to do that's what has been my present uh work day yeah i have one more salary of a chef chef on a cruise ship so Uh, if you are getting in uh, if you are getting in as the as the uh, bottom level uh, so bottom when i when i mean bottom level i mean uh, as a commi or a trainee commi you are looking at anywhere between 600 to 700 us dollars uh to uh, a cdp you would be looking at about uh, 1400 dollars to a sous chef you will be looking at about uh, Three thousand, four thousand dollars. As an executive chef, you look at somewhere around uh, seven thousand US dollars, seven thousand to eight thousand US. Dollars. Yeah, but see, it's, uh, I don't. I know. I I have gone abroad. I have been on the cruise ship, so I understand what you guys are looking at. Uh, definitely go. Uh, definitely uh, have your experience there. It will make you tough. it will make you uh, it will make you stronger so i hope all of you get an opportunity to go abroad to see uh, how things are uh, outside india uh, it will be definitely a a good thing for you guys to go abroad and see what's happening good afternoon to all uh, who have been actively participated in this uh, productive webinar so uh i take this opportunity to deliver the word of thanks and uh, first of all uh, i would like to thank chef hajid janathan for uh, accepting our request and uh, delivering such uh, relevant relevant to the current scenario uh, a topic and the topic was excellent like usually i have uh, heard chef uh, several location so this time i would like to express my gratitude to chef because any time when we approach or any kind of uh, uh, help from him like all heart at least even i know that hotel was so busy when the during that time he accepted he sent his people as a resource person we had great persons to have workshop on tandu we had great persons to have workshop on the chicken good thing even on uh, uh, Gravies and sauces, soups, like that. So many sessions that he said that he himself has come forward to conduct some 
excellent workshop like plating and they talk about uh, the, the new concept of modern design everything was highly productive like he first of all i thank chef for that in this occasion just telling this uh, every student also like you should be knowing how much chef is helping our department so uh, chef your uh, talk was really uh, uh, enlightening especially uh, socially responsible like you're making your you're giving a, uh, a glimpse to the student said that like how much the chef needs to be socially responsible like right? avoiding wastage and, and the concept of root to leaf is an excellent one like all these are just okay just uh, proud of some ideas in the people in the the, the people who were uh, listening to you. thanks a lot sir once again i also like to thank uh, my colleague uh, jonathan who has been uh, uh, behind the scene actually has done everything for this webinar jonathan and my uh, other colleague uh, mr murli taran for being uh, present in the occasion uh, i also like to thank all my uh, students uh, for uh, being or for coming in for the webinar and i also thank chef patiently answering all the questions of our uh, students thanks uh, everyone once again